Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another screencast by your Earth Science teacher, Mr. Stano. And now we're going to look on to seismic waves. Seismic waves are basically as an earthquake releases that energy at a fault, it releases it in a couple of different ways. We get P waves, S waves, and L waves. We're primarily current concerned with these two right here, the P and the S waves. There are some differences between seismic waves. Primary waves or P waves, it makes it a little bit easier to remember, they arrive first. And because they arrive first, they're faster waves. They can travel through, and this is extremely important, solid liquids and gases. Remember, Earth's crust, or actually the Earth itself, is made up of multiple different layers of material. And those, some of those materials are going to be liquid, semi-liquid, or solid. So this is extremely important that P waves are able to go through all. They also become faster in denser material. Those particles are closer together, so the transfer of energy is, uh, it can go faster through it. Secondary waves arrive second. They are also slower. They only go through solids, so it's easy to remember secondary waves because of the S's. They cannot pass through liquids. They can only go through solids. If you look at the structure of a P and an S wave, you can see the P waves are these compressional waves. So basically, this is going to hit here, which is going to hit into that one, and you'll see it move down a line. An S wave, this wave, this longitudinal wave right here, you can see that it goes up and then it travels like this. We'll actually demonstrate these in class. It's a lot easier to see it than to look at a diagram. This is once again looking at the two different waves, and you can see the compressions right here, which is going to cause this to travel downwards, and the S wave right here, you can see how it's this up and down movement. P waves right here, pushing, you can see that this is the disturbance, and as it pushes here, this energy is going to travel down this way. The third wave is known as an L wave, or a love wave. These are going to arrive after P and S waves, they're the slowest of all, but they're the most destructive. You could see very similar to like water waves that the particle is pretty much the same place, but it's going to cause an undulation and a change in direction of the surface. These are primary uh, waves. You can see here is our epicenter. The energy is going to move. Remember, it's going to change speed as it goes through the different parts of the Earth. Notice here, as it changes or hits a different layer, it changes direction. Hits a different layer, changes direction, and goes through. The primary wave is able to go all the way through the Earth. Um, secondary wave, notice coming from the same spot, it's going to move through this way also. So secondary wave. Secondary wave, as it goes downward this way, notice that's it out the other side, we only get our primary wave. We can safely infer from this that this is liquid. And this is some of the ways we were able to kind of figure out what's going on inside the Earth. So because the primary wave ends up on the other side and ES doesn't, we're able to say there's a liquid, some sort of liquid inside the Earth. The area where no waves are appearing are known as the shadow zone. So here, once again, we have our P and the S waves moving out from our epicenter, going through. Same thing, primary waves able to make it all the way through. But right here in this region, no waves are felt. So if you're standing anywhere over here on this side of the planet, you would never know an earthquake occurred. Seismographs there would never pick it up. Anywhere else, it's gonna at least pick up a primary wave which is going to take us to some earthquake problems, uh, looking at these seismograms and then trying to figure out what's going on. But we're going to save that for another screencast. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.